So if sugar is the first ingredient, that's the most you know potent thing. Any commercial you see on TV, stay away from it. It's bought and paid and it's not good for you. I must be doing something right. If I made national headlines, this reporter from the Washington Post found me um, and found my work email. So how she found the work email, I don't know, but kudos to her. She must have did a lot of digging. You were featured on Jimmy Kimmel and you received a lot of hate. Can we go into that? Yes. Hello, beautiful being, and welcome to the Evolving with Jessica podcast. I am a certified integrative nutrition health coach and certified life coach. In this podcast, we cover topics such as holistic health and wellness, nutrition, and spirituality. If you enjoy or gain any insight, remember to subscribe. New interviews are released weekly. Thank you for listening, and please enjoy this episode. Welcome, Evie Kivish, to the podcast. I first came across your content over two years ago, and so this is really neat to have you on here and get to talk to you and dive into all things health and juicing. And can we just start off uh, by sharing a brief overview about yourself and what it is that you do? Sure. Thank you so much for having me on today, Jessica. I truly appreciate it. I'm very honored to be on your podcast. Um, so yeah, a little bit about me. I am a 44 year old mom. Uh, I have two girls. They're seven and eight years old. So I had two kids in two years. Um, and that is what got me into my juicing journey because I have always been athletic and worked out. Um, but after having two kids in two years, I was really overweight. Um, and it was because I was breastfeeding both of them at the same time. And I really had like low energy and I was looking for energy and a way to make me feel sexy and beautiful again. So that kind of like brought me into um, fruit smoothies. And then as I started learning more about fruit, I started learning more about uh, the power of fruit and then juicing. And then I started kind of sharing my journey on social media and more and more people kept asking me about it. So I was like, gosh, I wonder if there's a school for this. So that's when I found the Juice Guru Institute and um, I did the mastery program there and received my certification and became a certified juice therapist. And now I love to help moms and women that are struggling um, either with low energy, fatigue, skin health, um, and just overall energy to learn how to use juicing either as a medicinal modality or to gain confidence and energy um, and to learn how to have more of a natural holistic lifestyle. So yes, and I'm also a power lifter. I love lifting weights and I'm hardcore trained uh, five days a week. And I have a pretty awesome garage gym that is called the Rican Hot Box because I'm Puerto Rican. So that's the name of it. <laughs> okay, I'm so glad that you brought up the weightlifting. Um, I've been getting into weights myself and some... One thing that I'm struggling with is all the different information out there as far as protein versus carbs versus what you need to build the muscle. How do you do it um, with so much juicing? I know a lot of people out there would say that there's too much sugar in juice or that you can't build muscle like, you know, on drinking a lot of juice. So how would you approach that? Great question. So I get that a lot, actually. And I've actually done a few different things over the past couple of years. So when I was first starting out, you know, I wasn't really that much like I, I became vegan when I turned 40. So I've been vegan for over four years now. And, um, you know, I know our society really focuses on the protein and all of that. And I was never really a big like protein person, calorie counter. I've, I've just never really done that. I just always believe like eating healthy and eating what you want. And then I'm sure if I actually counted calories and macros and stuff, and I would probably have more of the physique that I really want, but I just don't want to do that. So um, what I did was I started doing my juices and then I was just eating, you know, my regular vegan food and stuff. Um, but a lot of it was still like cooked and process, you know, like in the beginning, I was still like learning and I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, and then as I started learning more about 
the vegan diet, then I started getting more into raw vegan. So then I was like, you know what? I'm going to try for a year taking absolutely no protein, not even focusing on any protein and just juice and raw foods and see if I can make any gains. And I was actually shocked. I went up 25 pounds in my deadlift and I got up to 250 pounds on my deadlift. So that right there like showed and proved to me that I still made gains and acquired more strength without having all the protein like that. Now, after a year, I would say, I mean, I still like eating raw and I feel really good when I eat raw, but mm -hmm. I was still like wanting, cause especially like in the Midwest, that's what I'm saying. Like I live right outside of Chicago and in the winters, they're dark, they're cold, they're brutal. And like, I wanted comfort food, you know, like I want a warm soup or something to help me, you know, like feel more like warm and cozy, you know? So sometimes like raw foods, it's just not cutting it or whatever. So I did start incorporating more cooked food back in just to kind of like see, you know, where I would be or whatever. And I could tell and notice a difference in my gut a little bit, but then I started kind of like balancing it out. And I would say now I'm like a 50, 50 raw and cooked food. Um, but I will say for sure, I definitely feel better on raw, but, um, again, just going back to, you know, everything that I've learned and all the things that I've, you know, researched over the past few years, it's like heavy protein diets are very bad for the body and the kidneys. Um, in addition to that, you look at a lot of bodybuilders, they have a lot of issues with their kidneys, especially males, you know, um, lo losing the hair, acidosis in the hair, um, erectile dysfunction, you know, these things are caused because the, the kidneys are so burdened with all of this protein. So now I'll have like a smoothie here and there, do something like that. But overall, I don't try to um, really focus on the protein. I just eat a whole food plant-based diet and then just have my juice. And then like, if I'm doing a competition or if I have something going on, I make sure to really do beet juice. That's like my pre-workout. Um, I love how it opens up the blood vessels and helps me with my workout. So, um, yeah, I just think that, you know, every person has to figure out what works best for them. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't judge anybody and what they do or how they, you know, pursue their fitness or whatever. But for me personally, you know, I'm 44 now. I am leaner, stronger, and fitter than I ever have been in my life. And it feels amazing. Yes, you you look amazing. So, a lot of people dread the thought of juicing though, because, you know, maybe they've done it once or they haven't done it because just looking at every, everyone else do it, it seems overwhelming, the washing, the prepping. What, how could you give any tips to those people to get started? And, or you mentioned beet juice. Could you buy beet juice from a store or is that going to not be equivalent to juicing your own? So what I would recommend is definitely if you can make your own juice or buy directly from a juice bar. Most of the time, the um, store-bought juices usually are HPP and they have preservatives and the, they process it where it takes a lot of the nutritional enzymes out. So what I would recommend is um, doing like what I call batch juicing. And that's what I do. Um, my family drinks juice as well. So I will spend like one day where I make all of our juices. And um, usually my husband and I will do like a full quart of juice a day. And then my girls drink usually like 12 ounces of juice a day. And um, if you are looking for more financial friendly budgeting, you know, I would say like juice, like bulk what's in season. So like right now, apples and pears are really good. Um, I know pears are like more in the winter, but right now there there's a lot of them by where I live. So I, I'm able to get good prices on those. Mm -hmm. And, um, just really know to like, when you're doing batch juicing, they can be stored in the fridge up to three days. I've gone, you know, a day or two past that and they still taste okay, but they're definitely losing the nutritional enzymes as each day passes. So that's why I always tell people, if you're going to do that, make sure that they're filled to the top, you know, to avoid oxidation, um, to preserve the nutrients, or you can also freeze your juices. Um, I personally don't do that. I know some people that do, I've had clients that done, have done that, but, um, you just have to make sure it's in glass and that you leave enough space at the top, like an inch usually. So when it expands, it doesn't burst. So that's a, a way to help people to kind of like get on the juice train, because I know it's a lot of work and same thing like me, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. I have my, my girls, I run my household. I have a lot going on. So 
it's not always like I can make juice every day. So if I do the batch juice like that, um, it's a lot easier. And then plus, if you get your kids involved, like them helping make it, like they'll want to drink it, you know? So it's a great way to introduce them to healthy foods. And then their palate gets used to those flavors. Mm, that's such a good point. My little four-year-old niece, well, she loves to help me make my celery juice every morning. But the only problem is, is she won't drink it. And so I'm the only one basically in my family that is into, you know, juicing and very like holistic health lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so how did you get your kids interested in drinking the juice? Did you just make it put more fruit in it or to make it sweeter? Or how did how did you do that? Definitely. So definitely with the fruit juices um, before the green. So if I did do any green juices, I would have to like hide and sneak, you know, like throw some kale or spinach like in with the celery and pineapple. So it, it tastes good. Um, and I'll be like, oh, this is a green Jolly Rancher, you know, and then they're like, oh, I want to drink it. Um, but yeah, just like my oldest daughter, she is very particular about textures and I'll be honest with you, she's eight and she is just now really starting to eat more fruit over this year. She's very, she's just like, it's so weird because she'll drink watermelon juice. She'll drink cantaloupe juice, any juice she'll drink. But then the fruit, it was like, she would not eat it, you know? Um, mm -hmm. But now she's finally got over the hump because I, I talked to her and I told her, I'm like, listen, you know, you have got to eat more fruit. Like this is essential for your health, your diet. And I showed her some stuff and, you know, now she understands and it's amazing. I'm like, oh my gosh, she's finally eating more fruit. And then my younger one, she eats everything and she loves it anyways. But having them to actually, you know, touch the fruit and like put it in the juicer and then their favorite part, they love to turn it on. And then um, once the juicer gets full, they open the, they call it pop the hatch and then like to see it come out, it gets them so excited. So it's nice because then they feel like, you know, they're part of it. And, oh, I made this. I want to try it. This is my juice, you know? So I really like that. And I feel like, honestly, it's kept them super healthy. Like, you know, during COVID, I mean, I feel so thankful and blessed. Like my whole family, none of us ever got sick. Um, and I felt like, you know, it was definitely from the juice because we're getting all those vitamins, minerals, and nutrients from our juices. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm good. You know, like I don't fear anything because I know my, I trust my immunity. So yeah, having them get involved is huge. Yes. Okay. I have one question that that just brought up is, does it matter if it's organic or not? So I always tell people do the best you can with the choices you have. So I absolutely, yes, for organic, but some people, it might not be available where they live or they can't afford it. So regardless whether my produce is organic or not, I always, you know, soak and clean my produce. Um, I actually grow my own stuff as well. Um, I have a huge garden and then we just planted uh, five Concord grape trees this year. So hopefully next year that should yield about 80 to 100 pounds of Concord grapes because where I get them now is from a farmer in Michigan. And I usually buy like 40 to 80 pounds at once. And then, you know, my whole family will eat them and we'll do like a grape cleanse, but you can only get them like once a year, you know? So I'm really looking forward to that. But yes, I would say, you know, I always tell people just do the best you can with the choices you have. And then there's certain fruits like strawberries, for example, I will not touch them if they're not organic, because I know that's like on the top of the list of the dirty dozen. And I am just very paranoid about that. Um, mm -hmm. but yes, I would always say, you know, definitely do organic when you can. And if you can't, that's okay. Just, you know, do the best with the choices that are available to you. Okay. And you mentioned that you and your family will do a grape cleanse. Do you mean by juicing them or you'll just eat the grapes? Um, we've done both actually. So like last year I did a three day grape cleanse and I was just amazed because even after cleansing and doing enemas and everything, I'm like, how is this stuff still coming out of my body, you know? So, um, but usually when I do it, I try just to drink the juice. Um, but last year I did do where it was eating the grapes and drinking the juice. And it was, I mean, Concord grapes are so potent and strong. I mean, it literally pulls massive toxins out of the body. So it's good, you know, and I always recommend that to my clients too. Like you should do a cleanse once a quarter as the seasons change. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a natural way to keep your immunity up. And then um, due to the fact that I had a powerlifting competition not long ago, 
I did not do my fall cleanse. So I'm going to be doing it uh, probably within the next two weeks. So I'm looking forward to getting cleaned out again. <laughs> yes. Okay. So a fall cleanse, does that mean you do a cleanse every fall or you do one every season? Every season. So like uh, the fall equinox is usually when I do it um, for New Year's, I usually do like a mini one. But mm -hmm. then, yeah, like during the spring, I do one summer, fall, winter. So four years, usually, you know, December 20th, 22nd, the winter solstice, I'll do one then. And then I feel like it's just, um, it's easier that way, you know, cause it's like, okay, I know this next season's coming up. I want to get my body prepared. I don't want to be dealing with, you know, pathogens and viruses and things like that. And I mean, it's been great. And it, even with my girls, I'm not saying they don't ever get sick cause they definitely have gotten colds and stuff, but overall, I mean, their health is amazing. Like I thank God, I mean, I don't ever take them to the doctor. They don't have any issues. And I truly believe it's a huge reason from the juice. And then obviously with their diet as well. But yeah, it's very important. And I always encourage people to do that because most people just don't even really take a break from eating, you know, all the digestion, your body's constantly using all that energy to process. And it's like, you know, same thing, like I'm Puerto Rican and growing up, like if we would get sick, you know, my grandma would be like, oh, you know, have crackers and soup and Sprite. That's just like what we did. But then now it's like, I know if I'm sick, I fast, like don't eat anything, you know, let your body heal and regenerate. So now I know that. And I don't, you know, push my kids to eat anything. Cause usually when you're sick, it's like your body's natural response. Like you don't want to eat, you know, mm -hmm. so that's why I tell people like just stay with the liquids and do your juices. And then depending on whatever you're dealing with, you know, have um, some type of juice to help with whatever you're dealing with. So for example, like if you're dealing with, you know, a lot of mucus and coughing, definitely recommend like grapes, lemon, ginger to pull, you know, all of that mucus out and get it out of the body. So, but again, a lot of people just think like, well, you know, I'll just get um, cough syrup and cough drops. And then you look at the cough drop ingredients. It's like red dye 40 and like sugar. And I'm like, this isn't even helping you. Come on guys. But a lot of people just don't know. So that's why I try to teach people there's definitely a better way. Yes. Oh my gosh. It's so funny. You mentioned the ingredients on, on products like that, because I started to feel like the very beginning of something coming on like a week or so ago. And I had just run out of my vitamin C and I have some on the way, but it wasn't here yet. And so I look to my family's supplements and I find their vitamin C and the first ingredient is sugar. Oh, man. like just sugar, like not even a sort of sorbic acid or anything like that. And I'm just like, how in the world? <laughs> so I just went without it. But um, yeah, I mean, it's so important to look at the ingredients on the back of things to know before you put it in your body. Yes. And I think a lot of people don't realize that like, you know, the front is for marketing and the back is for education. And then how the ingredients go into sending order. So if sugar is the first ingredient, that's the most, you know, potent thing in yeah. there. So then you think like, well, how is sugar going to feed my cells to heal from whatever it is, you know? But a lot of people, again, they're just uneducated. And I always tell my clients, any commercial you see on TV, stay away from it. Because mm -hmm. anything that's like that, you already know, you know, it's bought and paid and it's not good for you. So I always tell people to try homeopathic remedies or, you know, just natural remedies like, you know, essential oils, you do your juices, herbs, things like that. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you mentioned before we press record that you have a degree in marketing and I do as well. So I imagine your brain kind of works like mine, where it's like everywhere you look, like it's marketing. Yes. That's all. Yeah, it is on every single thing. You know, I, I do see that even if I'm just driving down the road, like I, I notice like signage and billboards and, you know, like, I'm like, oh, that's a good billboard. That's not a good billboard. Or, you know, like, um, for example, where I live another town over, it's very affluent, but the main strip of the town is like very old and, you know, it's just like, it just looks bad. You know, I'm like these, all this signage and the lighting and all that is like from 1990, you know, I'm like, come on, it's 2023. We need to upgrade. So yes, I'm with you on that. I still have my marketing eyes on everything. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I want to get into another thing you were sharing before we started recording, recording, and that is 
about you leaving corporate. So I'll let you tell the story kind of from the beginning, because I know you were in the corporate world and now you're out of it. And I think a lot of people will benefit from kind of hearing how you transitioned. Yes. So, all right. Um, I, you know, when I went to school, I was like, all right, you know, I didn't really know what I wanted to do till I was 22. I had changed my major a few times, transferred colleges. And then finally, you know, once I got into the business school and marketing, I really enjoyed it. And then um, I was like, all right. So my first job was at an agency. And I remember it was more, you know, this was a long time ago. So it was like heavily print focused. So a lot of print products, uh, newspapers and things like that. And it taught me a lot. You know, it was a very good uh, job and I loved it. But after a couple of years, I was like, you know, I want to grow. And there wasn't really a lot of room to grow there. And this is like when more digital was coming like on board. So I was like, you know, trying to find a new position and I did. And I worked at, um, I got a job at a casino. I worked as a marketing database coordinator there. And that job also taught me a lot because when I was younger in my early thirties, I was so focused on like the title, the money getting to the top. Like I didn't care. Like I was so like just focused on my career. And then I learned a big lesson at that job. And you know, after I was there for a couple of years, again, I wanted to grow, move up. And, you know, here I'm thinking like, I'm in my early thirties, wearing all these business suits, like it felt so good. I'm like, oh, I'm doing it. Well, then they had offered me to work on the casino side of marketing. So I could learn that side of the business. And then, um, I knew going into it that it was going to be a totally different life because, you know, I was a regular nine to fiver, but then going into this position, it was going to be working like really crazy hours and basically like selling your soul to them because they own you. It doesn't matter if you have a family, it doesn't matter anything like you have to work when you have to work, no matter what day, no matter what time, nights, holidays, weekends, Christmas, New Year's, like whatever. So I did that and it just got to the point where I was in that position for like a year and I absolutely hated hated it. Um, I told my husband, I'm like, I don't even know if I could do this anymore. I don't care if there's a hole in my resume. Like I just can't do it. Well, while I was working there, um, I used to date a guy that worked at a radio station and, uh, a colleague of his had actually reached out to me to see if I could get her, um, into a meeting with the vice president of marketing at the casino. Cause she was trying to get a contract for the Chicago bears partnership. So she had told me, she's like, Hey, my company is hiring. If you're interested, you know, and I was like, Oh, all right, I'll check it out. Well, I did. And then, um, you know, I always had in my head, like I knew I wanted to have a family, but in my head, I always thought like, well, I can't do that until like I'm at a company for a couple of years. Cause I don't even know where that came from, but I just, just had that in my head. Well, you know, I'm getting older and older. So by this time I'm 35 and, um, I, you know, met the the owner of this company called Shaw Media and um, the interview went great. We met in person and then he was like, you know, I'm ready to hire you. And I'm like, okay. So he hired me and I started there on May 5th. And then a month later I found out I was pregnant and I was absolutely terrified because I'm like, oh my gosh, now I have this great position and I'm pregnant. Like what's going to happen? And I was so, so scared to tell him that I was pregnant because I thought that, you know, they were going to put me on the chopping block and let me go. But thankfully, um, I had a good conversation and he was really cool about it. And he was like, are you going to come back to work? And I said, yes, because I, I never wanted to be a stay at home mom. And I don't have anything against anyone that does that, but I have just, that was not for me. Um, so I worked all the way till the end and I, you know, had my daughter and then I had two kids in two years. It was kind of crazy and a lot. But um, again, you know, moving in from that and then trying to figure all of it out, going into uh, management then. So after I had my girls, you know, I moved up and I became the project manager. So I had a team and I really loved it. I mean, I worked there for almost 10 years. Um, the company was great to me. I really loved it. But as the years started, you know, progressing, 
I really started to change uh, personally. I had a spiritual awakening um, when I was 40 years old. And then that was like the start of it. And then from there, it was like, as I started, you know, learning more and then with the juicing, starting my side hustle, I was like, okay, you know, like, I just thought it was just going to be my side hustle, you know, just make some extra money here and there. But then I started realizing that my passion and purpose is not to, you know, be in the media. It's to help and serve others to show people about natural and holistic health. And to really, um, you know, open the door for people to understand that there's another way to heal. And I've always been into health and fitness and nutrition. I mean, you can ask anyone that knows me, like I've always been like that. And um, for me to be able to leave corporate, like that was just never in my mind. It just, it wasn't because my dad had always told me like, you need to get a good job. You need to stay safe, get your 401k. Um, you know, and it was like a safety net, you know, but I knew that I needed to make the jump, but I didn't know how I was going to do it. So then November of last year, I found, um, this woman and she actually does what's called RTT therapy, rapid transformational therapy. So this therapy is where you go into hypnosis to, um, uncover, like she goes into your subconscious to see what are these deep rooted beliefs that you have that are holding you back from the life that you want to live. So I had three memories um, that I saw very clearly. I could not believe what I saw. And um, I'm not going to share all of them. I'll share one. The most, the one that like really was the strongest for me was when I was six years old, I saw myself standing above my pool and I was like wading my foot in the water and to me, it was like so metaphorical because it was like, I was afraid to take the jump, just like I was afraid to take the jump out of corporate, you know? So I was like, well, how am I going to do this? And it was like to let go and release all of those fears, because in order for me to move forward in my purpose, I had to let go of that stagnant energy that was holding me back and mm -hmm. me doing my position 40 hours a week in corporate was not, you know, letting me get to where I needed to be in my business to put all my energy to help my clients and other people with everything I wanted to do. So, um, I just, you know, like after that I had a massive breakthrough, it was seriously like a full energy clearing. I just received so many messages from my higher self and I felt so liberated. So then at that point I knew that I was going to resign, but I didn't tell anybody about it. Um, I didn't know when I was going to do it, but I knew I needed to do it. So I, I, it was months. Like I just kept meditating. Like, when is the day? When am I going to find out? Like what day am I going to resign? Because my goal was to be out of corporate America by the time I was 45, which will be next July. So I finally one day got the message. I'm a cancer. So I am deeply emotional and very sensitive like to water. So I get like really good meditations when I'm in the shower and my higher self told me finally, like the light bulb went off and it was like May 5th. And I'm like, five, five. And then that was the day that I started my position too. And I'm like, no way. So, um, yeah, I talked to my executive and I told him that I was resigning and he couldn't believe it. He was like, are you serious? Are you joking? And I'm like, no, I'm serious. Like it's time. And it was very scary, to be honest, at first, because I'm like, you know, it's literally surrendering and stepping into the unknown. But that's when you have to trust yourself and know, like, when you are going on your soul mission and purpose that the universe will open all the doors and the right people, the right place at the right time, just all of it. But you have to be willing to trust and do that. And I did. And now here I am, it's been about six months and it feels absolutely amazing. And I would encourage anyone that is in that boat to really explore that, you know, if there are things holding you back, look at what that is, you know, why, why do you have those beliefs? And for me, I didn't know, you know, it's some from my childhood programming and, um, these beliefs that just kept my mind in a shallow state. And now it's like, poof, I'm free, you know? So it feels really good. It's such an inspirational story. And also I love just how like optimistic and positive your mindset is too. And just to reiterate for those listening, she did RTT, 
Yes. Right. RTT. So if you want to look that up, I know that there are people that specialize in that and that you can do either a series or a session, but I, that's something that I've been wanting to do too. So I'm probably going to look into that myself because the healing is never done. Like there's always more to like uncover that's pushed down and buried in there. And by, by figuring out what that is and releasing it, like the sky is the limit for us, you know? Oh, it's huge. You know? And that's, I never even knew or heard of that, to be honest with you. Um, so I was shocked and I couldn't believe, that's what I'm saying. Like, how could someone do that and me see memories like that? And the youngest, I mean, I had one memory from eight months old. The other one was three years old and the other one was six years old. And I mean, it was so clear. Like I was right there, like in the moment, like I saw everything and I was like, oh my God. I mean, it was it was unbelievable, you know, but then understanding how, you know, those deep rooted things that are in your subconscious, you know, people don't even realize like you're just on autopilot thinking all these thoughts. And like, when you really become conscious of your unconscious thoughts, that's when you start making changes. You know, you have to understand that your mind is so powerful and you can create and manifest the life that you want and desire, but you have to be conscious of the unconscious thoughts and really the key for me too is meditating like I used to just meditate like once a week but now I do it like every day you know because I know how important it is and then you get messages and answers from your higher self it's like oh okay thank you I got the note you know so even I got one yesterday and I'm like all right loud and clear you know so just taking that time to connect with yourself and to really just unplug from everything because we're just our society is so like that you know it's like as soon as people get up check in the phone you already your subconscious you know it's being programmed by whatever you're looking at so I make sure like but when I get up the first thing I do is meditate and I don't look at my phone I don't go through my email social media none of that because I don't even want any of that in my mind and then same thing like when I work out you know, I know you're supposed to protect your ears too, like what you hear and listen to. And I'll be honest, like sometimes, you know, I like some hood jams and some stuff and I know the music's bad. So that's why I'm like, well, I can't be having that as the first thing that goes to my head. So I meditate you knowing I'm working out. All right, now I can have some stuff. But you know what I mean? It's like, you got to watch your thoughts and just, you know, what you sing and speak and all that. It, it definitely, you know, can attract things maybe that you don't want in your life. So yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm that's funny you mentioned the music thing because for the longest time I wouldn't even listen to music with words because I'm like I don't know like I don't trust the frequencies like I know that they're like programming me somehow and but now like you know I'm back in the gym and I'm doing like these workouts so it's like these these are the different music like the different songs that actually I don't know they motivate me like they get me going more so I I'm like consciously like, okay, I'm only going to listen to this when I'm working out. Yeah. And then I'll listen to like some type of cleansing frequency when I shower after. <laughs> I, I love it. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I want to talk about the Jimmy Kimmel show. You were featured on Jimmy Kimmel and you received a lot of hate. Can we go into that? Yes. Okay. So um, while I was project manager at my media agency, um, I, I'll tell you what happened was, um, again, I respect everybody's decisions and beliefs. And I just want to put that out there. I don't judge anybody for what they choose to do with their life. I believe we're all on our own paths and journey and you have to do what works for you. But for me and my body, my health, I choose um, to stay holistic and trust my own immunity. So what happened was I was wearing a shirt and it was in a reel that I had and you could literally see it for like 0.01 second and it said vaccines are poison. All right. And in the caption, I never talked about the vaccine. I never said anything about it. Um, but in the caption, I just said the whole time the, the pandemic has been going on. Have you heard anything about nutrition, exercise, health? No. All you kept hearing was masks and gloves. You know, so I was like, we need to, you know, relearn as a society to trust our body and our immunity and realize, you know, that you can use juicing to protect yourself. So from that, um, this reporter from the Washington Post found me 
um, and found my work email. So how she found the work email, I don't know, but kudos to her. She must have did a lot of digging and it got past the firewall and into my inbox. So uh, she said, hey, Evie, uh, my name is blank from the Washington Post and I want to talk to you about a shirt that you were wearing on you know June whatever and she was like we're doing um an article about the misinformation being spread around about the COVID vaccine and I just knew that um I did not want to respond to that because first of all I felt like wow you came to my work email you know and then I was concerned because I'm like well what if I get in trouble but then I'm like but I didn't do anything wrong you know like I was a remote worker um you know, we would go in the office once in a while, whatever, but like at my, all of our offices, like when you walk in, it's got the first amendment up there, you know? And I'm like, okay, so that doesn't really go with like my company's values and beliefs or whatever. So I didn't respond. I just left it alone because I'm like, you know, I felt whatever I said, they were going to skew to fit their narrative, you know? And I was just like, I'm going to leave it alone. So I did. And then two weeks goes by and then she emails me again and copies like 10 other reporters on it. And she was like, we're gonna publish this article about you. It's gonna say Evie Kivish from Chicago, certified juice therapist, um, CrossFitter, and like saying, you know, that I'm spreading this stuff on the internet. And I was like, well, gosh, you know, I didn't say anything and I just left alone, I'm like, whatever. So they published the article. I was in there with some other people, which actually brought me to some other uh, holistic friends that I found on Instagram after that. And, um, it was basically just, you know, bashing us and talking crap about, you know, we're considered like quacks because we're, you know, we believe in the, in our bodies and able, able to heal ourselves, you know? Mm -hmm. So after that, that was on Sunday. And then on Monday I was on the Jimmy Kimmel show and I did not know this. So I woke up to on Tuesday morning with my social media inundated. In addition to that, my inbox from people going on my website because Jimmy Kimmel pulled out my Instagram on his show, showed me the post and was talking crap about me saying, you know, oh, look at this girl, Evie Kiva. She's a certified juice therapist. Where do you get certified for juice? University of Jamba? You know, and it did make me laugh. I'm not going to lie. But I was like, okay, whatever, you know, and then um, I actually called my brother and I was like, hey, you know, can you find this video? Like, I'm trying to see like what, what he did or showed or whatever. So he found it and then sent it to me and I watched it and I was just like in shock, you know, I couldn't believe it. So then after that, um, the owner and founder of the Juice Guru Institute, where I received my certification, Steve Prusak. He actually reached out to me and he was like, hey, did you know that you were on Yahoo News? And I was like, no, I didn't. But then after that, it just exploded and it went on all these publications, podcasts, international media. And um, it was crazy. But I would say it was like 80 to 90 percent hate. And then I got about like 10 percent of people that were like, I found you because of Jimmy Kimmel. I'm with you. You know, I appreciate you. Um, so I was just thinking like, here's, you know, Evie Kivish in Northwest Indiana, like you found me. And at that time, I really did not have a big following on Instagram. I say, I, maybe I had like five or 6,000 and I was like, well, wow, I must be doing something right. If I made national headlines and that's free advertising to me, you know? So, um, I actually did reach out to the Jimmy Kimmel show after that. And I was like, bring me on your show, you know, like, why not? And they didn't respond, but I was ready to go. I'm like, you know, whatever. So yeah, it was uh, quite the ride. And then um, I was concerned for my safety and my family's safety for a while because that was like, you know, the height after the pandemic and people were just so like, you know, emotional about it, very sensitive subject. And um, it just, yeah, it, it just went off after that. So it was definitely a crazy experience and I couldn't believe that happened. And the crazy thing too is that I didn't tell anybody about it that I worked with um, and nobody ever said a word to me about it, but I know that they knew because after one of my colleagues left, she did tell me, she's like, oh, I saw you on the Jimmy Kimmel show, you know, and I'm like, oh yeah, that was me, you know, so, but I was thankful. I mean, you know, but I, I just really felt that um, it was, 
you know, just a big divide. I feel like they were just trying to divide more and more people, you know, and that's what I feel like. I respect everyone, whether you, you know, do that or not, like, I'm okay with that, you know, but it's like, I feel like it's the other way around. Like, if you don't do it, people were so like, well, you know, you're gross, or we can't be friends or, you know, so, but again, that's why I feel like when you are more spiritually um, open and understanding that everybody is on their own path, then you have respect and like, just leave people alone, you know, just let them be. And that's what I feel, you know? So it's like, I respect people either way, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. And what's, what's the saying? All publicity is good publicity or something? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. <laughs> and then yeah. another thing is like, maybe it was, it's what you wanted in the sense that you wanted to be full-time entrepreneur in the juicing and the health world um, outside of the corporate life. So sometimes I feel like the universe is like, okay, are you ready? Or like, you know, like, like puts you in these situations to see like how you're going to handle it. Yeah, no, I agree. Because initially I thought like, man, what if I get fired? You know, like, but then I'm like, well, why would I get fired? I'm like, I didn't do anything wrong. And then I thought that I'm like, if it is, then that's just the universe pushing me out. Like it's time girl, you know, yeah. So, but I, I stayed there and everything was fine. Like I said, nothing ever came up, but I'm like, I know they had to have known about it. You know, there's no way. So whatever. I'm like, it is what it is. And I was like, well, I, again, I did something for you guys to find me and to, you know, put me in the Washington Post and on Jimmy Kimmel. So I'm like, I'll take it. <laughs> mm -hmm. You recently released your first book. Congratulations. That's a huge accomplishment. Um, so what, who is the book for and what is it about? All right. So yes, I, I did just release my first book. Um, thank you. It was a lot of work and it feels really good to have it done. Um, so I just kind of wanted to do a book about what people come to me. You know, most of my clients come. So it's uh, juicing for skin health, inflammation and bloating. And um, what it is, is just kind of like breaking everything down to understand like why you may be getting these symptoms. What are the causes of these symptoms? And then in addition to, to that, there's recipes in the book that help with these different things. And then at the end of the book, there's a seven day juice cleanse. If you want to try that, you know, um, to kind of like reset. And, you know, I just feel like a lot of people, it's, it's crazy. You know, I get mostly moms and women that come to me and it just blows my mind how many people are just so bogged down with inflammation no energy. That's like the number one thing I hear is fatigue and no energy. And then it's like, when people sign up with me, we do an intake form and I look at their diet and, you know, sometimes I can see certain patterns with certain people. And then especially with women, like a lot of emotional eating, um, and then looking at like, what is the root cause of these issues? Like, why are you feeling like that? And in addition to that, I feel like you know, I am deeply spiritual and I know not everybody is like that, but I believe like the chakras are tied into your overall health. So if you're dealing, you know, with thyroid issues, yes, you have a blockage there, you know, and that's a common thing where people who have throat issues, thyroid issues, they're not able to speak their truth, you know, um, people who have addictions with sexual things or sexual problems, you know, the, the root chakra you know, working on that, what kind of foods can we get into those areas to help clear that out? So usually, you know, the colors of the chakras go with the colors of the food or juices that you need to help heal that area. Um, and then looking at the body as a whole, you know, letting people know that you can heal your body if you create the right conditions for it, but you have to be willing to do something you've probably never done before. So I feel like that's where the challenge comes in. Cause a lot of people are like, well, I don't know how to eat like that or do this. And I don't tell people which way to eat or how to eat, but I do tell them certain foods to omit or avoid during the healing process. So a lot of people don't understand about mucus forming foods and what is mucus. And I tell people, you know, mucus is the underlying cause of every disease. You know, you look at bronchitis, mucus in the lungs, you look at prostate cancer, mucus in the testicle region endometriosis, mucus in the, you know, ovaries, fallopian tubes, all of that. And the more mucus forming foods that you eat, I'm sure, as you know, the more your body makes mucus. And then what does that cause? Disease, inflammation. 
So that's why people need to learn how to clear out the body and then understand the lymphatic system. I know that, you know, Western doctors and here in the U.S., we just always focus on, you know, covering up the symptom and looking at the blood. Whereas I am more into Eastern holistic medicine and we look at the body as a whole and healing the lymphatic system. Because we know if the lymphatic system is not working, then nothing else is going to be working. And I feel like that is where a lot of people don't understand um, how that works, you know, and I always encourage people get, do a colon cleanse, uh, get a colonic, do an enema, you know, and you'd be surprised at what comes out. And I've had clients are like, man, I felt so much better after that. Or they notice like a decrease in the bloating, you know, and I'm like, a lot of people are carrying around a, a lot of compacted fecal matter in their gut and they don't even realize it, you know? So that's what I try to show people is to really understand, you know, about, mucus forming foods and to clear cleanse the body and just understand that, you know, you can feel better and look better, but you have to bring in the right things. So that goes back to like, when people are like, how do you lift so much weight? You know, like I can back squat 215 pounds and they're like, don't your knees hurt? Does your back hurt? And I'm like, no, because I don't really have a high pH level of acid. You know, I'm more in an alkaline state. And I truly believe that it helps me recover and helps me with my joints and my bones and all that because I'm still making gains at 44. You know, I'm like, I'm going to get to that 300 pound deadlift. I'm, I'm almost there. So I'm like, it's going to happen. So, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. And you were mentioning too, that you just competed in powerlifting, didn't you? Last yeah. weekend? Yes. I just had my first meet. Um, it was it was awesome to be honest, but I will be honest with you. Um, I did get disqualified. So what happened was when I was doing my bench press, um, my butt cheeks came off the bench and I didn't know that, but the judges obviously saw it. And if they come off, you get disqualified. So I was so sad because I worked so hard, you know, to get there. Um, but I still completed the meet. I did very good. Um, I got, I did the SBD, which is squat, bench and deadlift. And the judges told me if I wouldn't have missed, messed up on that, my butt stayed on the bench, I would have won a medal. So now that's like was driving me for my next competition. Um, but it was so exciting, you know, to just test my strength. And it, I just did it for myself. It wasn't for anyone else. Like I just wanted to see where I was at. Mm. But it was working. You know, you go up there, it's there's like all these people around you watching you to watch your form, you know, when you're coming down on the bench, you got to bring it down. When they say press, you lift it up and there's spotters, there's judges. So it was really nerve wracking. And then, um, you have to wear like everything you wear has to be approved by the Federation. So like I had to wear a singlet, which is like what they wear in the Olympics to lift in. Um, and then I got, I had to get a new weightlifting belt because obviously being a vegan, I was not going to have a leather weightlifting belt. So I found one that is approved, a uh, vegan one. So I got that. And then um, I just went out there and did it, you know, and it was truly an amazing experience. And I'm definitely doing it again. And again, I was bummed that I got disqualified, but it didn't stop me because I'm like, now I'm on the hunt. So I actually, um, this whole week have been looking for a coach to help me. And I found a guy. So I'm going to be meeting with him next week. And I'm going to start training with him because I'm like, I'm getting that medal. So it's going to happen. I'm not giving up. I'm not throwing the towel. I'm like, this is just motivation for the next one. So yes, I'm there. I could literally ask you probably 20 more questions just about the fitness weightlifting spectrum of things. Um, but I feel like I'm already <laughs> pretty much drilling you hard on this. We could do a whole other episode on that. Yeah. Um, there, you were also featured in a European magazine recently. I feel like you're doing so much. Okay, now, now my mind is like, how are you a mom of two young girls and a wife and weightlifting and featured in all these places? And you just released your first book. Like you're doing so much. Thank you. Yeah, so I am a very disciplined person. Um, I have a very strict lifestyle. I do not consume alcohol. I eat good foods. I go to bed early. I get up early because it's not like it's a fad. Like this is my lifestyle. You know, I choose to get up. I get up at 3.33 a.m. Monday through Friday. Um, and the reason for that is because that time to me is so precious because I know 
once my day actually starts, like getting the kids up, get them off to school, then I'm not going to have time to work out because I'm working on my business. I have my stuff to do. You know, I have client calls during the day, whatever I'm working on. And then when my girls get home, you know, I like to have food ready for them. And then I help them with their homework and they do karate, they do softball. So we usually have somewhere to go. And then by the time we get back, it's like dinner, bath, bed, and then it's almost time for me to go to bed. So um, that is why I get up that early because I choose to, I want to be healthy and fit and I am. And um, it's very important to me. You know, everyone has their thing. To me, it's like, I've always enjoyed weightlifting. I started, I've always worked out and stuff. But I didn't really start really taking it seriously until I was 33. That's when I started really getting into weightlifting. So it's been like 11 years now and um, I'm still learning, you know, but it's, um, it's just a lot. And I, that's what I'm saying, like having a schedule and being disciplined and organized, it really helps with that. And I feel that um, that's how I, I'm able to do all this stuff. You know, it's like being focused and doing that. And then on top of that, it's like, I don't even go out searching for this stuff. Like these people come to me, you know, so I'm like, I am manifesting this. So the publisher of this European publication called Fruit Juice Focus reached out to me to ask me if I wanted to be a contributor to their um, September edition in regards to mental health. So um, I wrote content for them and then they had pictures in there and a little uh, snippet in there about me. And I was actually really shocked about it because I was like, wow, you know, and I always ask people like when they find me, like, how did you find me? Um, and I'm telling you, like having understanding marketing and advertising SEO, um, I have a blog on my website that's updated every month and, you know, like using keywords and all of that has absolutely helped. Um, and most people do find me from my site and I feel like it's such a valuable thing. You know, people don't realize like your website is your bread and butter, you know, like the other stuff is great. The social media aspect is great, you know, for sure. It's like a lead magnet and definitely brings clients in. But at the end of the day, it's like my site, I own that. I own my database and I nurture my database and I've been continually growing it. I send out regular e slash newsletters um, and just to really continue to educate people on a holistic lifestyle and juicing. So it's been great. Um, but that's the thing, you know, it's like, just again, staying organized, disciplined and focused. And it's like, I think about, you know, in the morning sometimes, yeah, it's, it's tiring, you know, like I'm tired. I don't want to get up. You can stay in that warm, cozy bed, but then I'm like, I'm going to miss out on my only opportunity to work out. And then I know once I work out in the morning like that, I feel so good physically, mentally, spiritually. Then I'm like, I know I'm going to take care of myself and eat good today because I worked out and I don't want all that to go out the window. So yeah. Yeah. Perfect segue. Where can people get on your email list? Where can people find your website? Yes. So you guys can check out my website. It's evikivish.com. Um, if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll be able to sign up. It's free. Um, you're going to get a download for uh, my top uh, juicing recipes and then my shopping and ingredient list just to help get you started. And then, um, again, it's going to be, you're going to be getting uh, newsletters from me, you know, a couple times a month, I'll send those out. And it's really just to talk about, you know, certain things that are going on that month. So I just had one go out this week and it was about, um, mammograms and again, respecting everyone's decisions or whatever, but you know, I'm 44, I've never gotten a mammogram. I'll never get one. And I had so many responses to that, you know, like a lot of people, could not believe that I never had one, but then they were actually, you know, light bulbs went off like, oh, well maybe I don't need to get this. Or, you know, I offered some other alternatives in there. Like you could do a thermogram and have that read by a radiologist if you really wanted to get your breast checked. Um, but after the countless hours of research and, you know, reading that I've done, I feel that, you know, I know the longer you breastfeed, the last chances are for breast cancer. And I breastfed for four years straight, both my girls, tandem nurse them. And I also believe that's the ticket to golden immunity as well. Um, but yeah, so, you know, just go on my site, uh, put in your info and then you'll get all the stuff, all free, all educational. You'll definitely like it. Amazing. And I highly recommend downloading those because getting 
those juice recipes. In fact, I'm going to get them from you as well. Um, that's gold, especially if you are looking to heal. Like a lot of my audience, because I also work with women who want to heal their skin, knowing the right foods and the right juices that will help you just get those results even faster with your skin and your gut is just life-changing. Absolutely. Yeah. And I will have all of those linked in the description so you can easily find them and um, yeah, get on Evie's uh, email list. And then I have one more question for you, which is what is your number one health tip, whether it's mindset, diet and nutrition, physical, emotional, just the one piece of advice you would like everyone to know. Oh gosh, that's a good one, Jess. Um, I would say really it starts with the mind. Your mind has got to be there before anything else. You have to believe that, you know, you want to heal. I can heal. And then from there, you can create the path to healing yourself. You know, whether that's through nutrition, exercise, or a combination of both, but really it starts in the mind and for people to understand that, you know, your, your thoughts, um, the things that you think, the things that you believe, they really have an impact on your life and your overall, you know, electromagnetic field. You know, if you want to be high vibrational and happy and full of life, then you need to bring life force energy into the body. And how do you do that? Eat and drink high vibrational foods. Um, surround yourself with high vibrational people, things, places. But again, it starts in the mind. You have to believe and know yourself that I have what it takes. I know I can do this. It might be hard, but I'm going to make it. And then every day, you know, that's why I tell my clients, just take one day at a time. If you mess up, it's okay. We're all human. Just restart. Don't wait. Oh, I'm going to wait a couple of days or till next week. No, start right after that for the next day and get back up on your feet and tell yourself and believe in yourself that you have what it takes and look at yourself when you say it, you know, there's sometimes like, I literally will like in the morning, look at myself in the mirror and like zone in and tell myself, I love you. I'm proud of you. You got this, you can do it, you know, and believing, truly believing that, you know, because at the end of the day, no one else can make you feel anything except the way you feel, you know, you're in charge of your own thoughts and how you feel. And that's what I'm saying. So if you fill your mind with positive thoughts, um, you know, read good things, meditate, journal, all of those things are going to help you create the lifestyle that you really want to live in abundance. Well said. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Evie, for joining me today. Uh, yeah, let us know in the comments if you enjoyed this, what you thought, and give Evie a follow. And Give this video a like if you're on YouTube, subscribe, all of the things. And thank you again, Evie. All right. Thanks, Joss. Thank you, guys. That concludes this episode. If this resonated with you, remember to subscribe. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below or you can reach out to me on Instagram. I would love to hear from you. Links are in the show notes, and I sincerely thank you for your time and your presence.